Okay, welcome to today's podcast on cell specialization. Okay, if you just look at that word, you should notice, okay, specialization, kind of a tongue twister, but you see the word special. So cells can become special. That's what specialization means. Okay, so think of cells in your body. Those, each of them are special because each of them has a specific job to perform. Okay. Unicellular organisms, they do not have specialized cells. Why? Because they're only one cell big, so their cells can't be special because there's only one of them. Okay. Notice there's prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. Right here are bacteria over here. This is bacteria. Here's some more bacteria. They could be archaebacteria. They could be eubacteria. Either way, they don't form specialized cells. These prokaryotes over here, no nucleus, okay? These eukaryotic cells, they're still unicellular. They're only one cell big. This is this guy here, the big blobs, the amoeba paramecium's over here. Notice this is a pretty good picture because you can see the little hairs around the outside. Remember those hairs are called the cilia which help the paramecium swim and this guy over here is the euglena. So again all of them they're single cell and so they do not have specialized cells. Okay but what is a specialized cell? A specialized cell just means that it performs a specific job. Okay, so when you have a bunch of cells that work together to form, to do a specific job, they make tissues, and then if you get a bunch of those tissues together, they can form organs. Okay, so if we look at the next slides, I'll show you some pictures, but basically an example would be you could have some heart cardiac muscle cells, right? They make cardiac tissue, which makes the organ the heart. Okay, so let's look at these different specialized cells. This right here, over here, those are muscle cells. Notice they have stripes in them, and that is because it helps them um, contract. So those are the muscle fibers where they contract. And then here you can see a nucleus. So they form these long fibers because they need to be able to shorten and lengthen, which is how your muscles contract. Down here is actually more muscle. Um, but what you can see here is they colored it, so you can see in green here, all these green structures in this muscle cell are all mitochondria. And just think about mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Think how much energy it's going to take for your muscles to work, right? When you think about the food that you're eating, you're eating food so you have energy. And where does that go? A lot of it goes to your muscles so your muscles can contract. Over here, in the middle we have a nerve cell. They've got a cell body here that's usually bigger and then a long stretching out and all this here is so that the nerve cells can connect with other nerve cells. So that's part of their job. Up here we have red blood cells, right? Nice round shape, very flexible so they can fit through all of your nerve, I'm sorry, all your veins and arteries and capillaries and they're usually, they're concave in the middle here, so like a little disc there, and that helps them hold more oxygen. Finally, this is a liver cell down here, and if you recall, we talked about the liver cells, um, and they would especially have a lot of um, smooth endoplasmic reticulum that makes fat, or lipids is the fancy word for fat, and also detoxes. Um, any poisons that come into your body. So different cells, different structures. Notice how they, their shapes are different, their structures are different. The parts of the cell that they have differ in terms of their quantity and position. And so that's what it, it means to become a specialized cell. Okay, this chart, not that you have to memorize this chart, but you should be able to understand if cells have different jobs, then they might have different needs and different requirements for cell parts. Okay, so we just mentioned muscle cells. They have to contract. They need a lot of energy, so therefore they have a lot of mitochondria. Your nerve cells have to conduct electrical impulses. That means they have to transport things in and out of their cell membrane. Okay, so cell membrane is important. Okay, but it requires energy, so again, mitochondria is important. Your nerve cells also have to communicate to every other cell in the body, and how they communicate is usually through proteins. So what's going to be important is the ribosome to make the protein, the ER to transport it, and the Golgi to package it up so that it can be shipped to other parts of your body.
So if you think about your brain and <clears throat> different hormones or anything that your brain makes that it has to send off to different parts of your body, that's the Golgi is going to be really important because that's going to make that package so that it can be sent to other parts of your body. Okay, red blood cells, they got to carry the oxygen. If we went back and looked at the red blood cell, you would actually see, or you wouldn't see, a nucleus. Okay, when red blood cells are getting made in your bone marrow, the nucleus is actually ejected from the cell. It's kind of funny, um, so that it has more room for oxygen. So if we just go back real quick right here, see, no, no more nucleus in the middle here. No more nucleus like this liver cell has a nucleus because it's got room, more room for more oxygen. That's why you can't actually make more red blood cells from red blood cells. They actually get made from bone marrow cells. Okay, And then, as we said, the liver makes fat and detoxes poisons, which is why the smooth ER would be so important. Okay, so again, different cells have different jobs, which means that they're going to have different amounts of cell parts, and those cell parts um, will work to help that cell do its job. Well, where do you get all these cell parts, different kinds of cells from? And the answer is from stem cells. Okay, so you started off one day, here's your mom's egg and your dad's sperm, that was you. I know you love to think about that. Um, so your parents made you one egg, one sperm, they came together. You started off as one cell. Those cells divided into two cells, which divided into four cells, a bunch, eventually making whole bunches of cells. Okay and eventually those cells become specialized. So a stem cell just means that it has the potential. So if you notice these words totipotent, that means that those cells have total, toti meaning total potential, to become any other kind of cell in your body. Okay, so eventually these cells will become heart cells, they'll become nerve cells, they could become immune cells. Okay, and then at the bottom here you see it says unipotent only meaning now that once it becomes that kind of cell, it only has one potential to be that kind of cell. So heart cells can make more heart cells, but a heart cell can't make a brain cell. Okay, but all of your cells, no matter what kind of cell, came from that one very, that one cell that you started off as, which was a stem, and those are called stem cells. So stem cells are unspecialized, but they can develop into any of the other kinds. Okay. A lot going on on this slide here, so let's just look at the picture and the first line here. The DNA in all of your cells of the body is the same. So you started off as one cell, so cell number one, that was you. You were one cell big. You divided and made two cells. Well, the cells of those two, the DNA is still the same. And when those two divided into three and four, the DNA in cells A, B, and C, it's all the same. Okay, so if the DNA is the same in every cell, then how is it that you can have different kinds of cells? And the answer is in the proteins. Okay, so the DNA has the instructions for making all the proteins. Okay, so here's your DNA in the nucleus. Okay, the DNA is going to tell the ribosomes which protein to make. If the DNA if the DNA tells the ribosomes to make some proteins, then it might become a nerve cell. Okay, but the DNA might tell the ribosomes to make a different protein, then those cells might become red blood cells. So it depends on the DNA in which protein it tells the ribosomes to make. And we call that when the genes get turned on or turned off. So you, you're, we're going to start learning about how the DNA actually does this in the, um, probably in Unit 7. Um, when we study the genes. But DNA, when we say the genes of the DNA get turned on, that means the DNA is telling the ribosomes to make some protein. Okay, And then if the DNA, we say it's turned off if that protein's not being made. So let me give you an example. Let's say in my scalp, the DNA there has directions for making blood cells. It has directions for making eye color proteins, it has directions for making stomach proteins, okay, and it has directions for making my lovely hair, okay. And so only the genes in my scalp, only the genes for my hair are actually turned on. The directions for making eye color protein and stomach protein and 
toenail protein, those genes are turned off. So while the instructions are still there, because the DNA is the same everywhere, those genes are just turned off. They're basically silenced. Okay, and so the DNA is turned on only for certain proteins so that the DNA tells the ribosomes, hey, just make these proteins because you're a scalp cell and you should only be making more hair for Mrs. Khan. You should be making eye color proteins in her scalp because that would be weird. Then she'd have blue eye protein being made in her hair. That would be weird. So that's why it doesn't happen like that. Okay, so those are specialized cells. Red blood cells are specialized. Again, specialized cells have special jobs. They do certain things. Okay, and it's all determined by which proteins the DNA, the DNA tells the ribosomes to make. That concludes this podcast. See you next time.